Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, and it reads, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry, for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of great millstone, the one that taught us the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere items. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here, for bed, just something quick. About to head out, Lord willing, get this daily bread. Lord willing, the Lord um, continues to protect us, hope for elects of the nation of Israel, which consists of your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Look, ju judgment upon the screen. Woman gets deleted after being hit by car, da damn shoe in the damn street. Damn knocked out her damn shoes, man. All right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Look, as so, soon as I read the scripture right as soon as I read the scripture right here, as soon as I read, read the scripture right here, I look at the news and, and you, you see a woman's shoe laying on the damn ground. Just, just one shoe. Got hit by a car, knocked out of the shoe, man. It's, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. You, you got it right here, you know what I'm saying? You, look, man, you got the Heavenly Father telling the angel to go through the midst, the angel with the writer's ink horn, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, which is a people before it's a place which represents you Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, right? Instead of mark, a spiritual mark, the wa, to be exempt from judgment, to be exempt from this judgment that's going forth, man. We, we warn you, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, few shall be saved, man. Few shall be saved. Them spirits, them deaf angels are going, man, they're active, man. They're, they're active. The Lord said, go do your job, man. Go do your job, you know what I'm saying? And, and look, 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 uh, look, appease me. Because remember the scripture say, um, and appease the wrath of him that made them. Going right back into um, Sarak 39, verse 28, those spirits that are created for it, they're active, Israel. You see? They're active. You, you don't hear what the scripture is saying? That's why we need to fear, man. They're active. Let's get, let's get this again. And it's talking, it's telling the angel to go, one angel to go with the writer's ink horn and set a mark, meaning exit from judgment, which was represents the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures. That's part of that mark that the wa to be exit from judgment, right? The names of the heavenly father, the proper name of the heavenly father and his only begotten son, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. We're we gonna get that too. We're gonna prove that the angels are actually holding back destruction until the servants are sealed in their forehead. We're gonna see if we can get that. But the Lord is willing and daily, man. The Lord is handing out a whole lot of ass weapons right about now. Handing out a whole lot of deletions, right? So, something quick, Ezekiel chapter 9. That, that's why we must fear. When we hear these words, we must fear. That's, that's what um, Habakkuk said. That's what, that's what all the prophets said. They said they heard the words of the Lord and they were scared. They was giving certain visions, man. They were throwing up. They woke up shaking, fearful. Woe was me. Woe was me. Who would deliver me in those days? That's what Ezra said. Let's get it again. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. This is something quick. Let us always be mindful. The spirits, creative events, they're active, man. And they can get each and each and each and each and each and every last one of us, man. At any time of the day. So let us be mindful, man. Work out your own. The Lord had me um, bring out a scripture last night. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord, Yahweh. Through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai said unto him, said unto the angel, right, with the writer's ink horn, right? Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, which once again is a people before us a place, which represents you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, and said a mark, a spiritual mark. The wa, not, not physical, but spiritual mark, which represents this knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, right? 
upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, which, which um, entails the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Matter of fact, let's just get that right quick. I'm going to come right back. Just want to prove that. Let's get this right quick. Let's get Revelation. Let's get this right quick. Revelation chapter 14. So this pad, I think you got some sense. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, and it reads, And I look, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him in a hundred and forty and four thousand. The elect men, the prophets, right? Having this, having his father's name written in their forehead. Do, do you not hear that? Written in their forehead. Didn't we, didn't we just read that? Didn't we just read that? Matter of fact, and um, I, got, I got another preacher. I'm going to read this again. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb, that lamb represents Lord Yahweh Shai, right? Stood on the Mount Zion. And with them in a hundred and forty and four thousand, the elect men, the prophets, right? Having his father's name written in their forehead. That's part of that the wall right there. That's part of that the wall right there. The knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, and most definitely the names. Because no name, no salvation. You see, the doctrine comes with the name, all right? Our doctrine is backed by a name. It's backed by two proper names in the Hebrew tongue, right? So let's go here. No, no, I'm, I'm going to be all over the place with this. Let's get, let's get um, Revelation. Still in Revelation. Let's get the seventh chapter right quick. Revelation chapter seven. We're going to go right back to Ezekiel. A whole lot of Israelites are going to be, you know what I'm saying, pretty much slaughtered out here, man. The Lord's going to destroy a whole, a whole lot of deletion, man. Revelation chapter seven. Um, one. Revelation chapter seven, verse one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth, with that which that wind represents destruction, right? That wind represents destruction. I think that's um Jeremiah fifty. I think that's Jeremiah fifty. We might have to get that. Standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind, the destruction, should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any trees. Matter of fact, I'm, 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 I got to get that. I got to get it. I got to show you what that wind represents. I'm going to be all over the place. Lord, when in, in Salaki, I got to kind of rush through it. It's early in the morning. I got to get ready to head out, kind of press for time. We'll just show you what that wind is. Like, I must be allowed to show you what that wind is. Jeremiah chapter 50. And is this it? Let's see. I don't know if that's it. I thought it was 50, but... I'm out there. Let's see. Um, bear with me. It was Jeremiah 51. Let's get it. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 1 in the reads, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This message is deadly serious, Israel. This message is deadly serious. Thus saith the Lord. It's always thus saith the Lord. It's always thus saith the Bible, right? Not our own words. We never come speaking our own words. Everything we say, we back it up with a scripture, right? Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, aka America, the land of confusion, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. Do you not hear that? A destroying wind. And was sent upon Babylon fanners. That shall fan her. And what does a fan do? It, it, it increases the fire, right? And shall empty her land. Those missiles going to hit this place, right? For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. So what is that wind representing? Destruction, right? That fire, right? So let's go back. Let's go right on back to Revelation. Just want to knock that, knock that out right quick. This is Revelation chapter 7, verse um, 2. And I saw, and look, look, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. That's what we're reading about in um, Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, verse four. You see the angel with the writer's ink on. This is what we're reading about right now, right? You get a little line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept. This is how you read the Bible, right? This is how you link up the puzzle, right? Having the seal, remember? 
set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that signed cry. Re remember that? Having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the service of our power in their foreheads. Remember what I just read? In, 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 as a matter of fact, well, we'll go back here. You, you see that? So that's all linking up, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea. So those angels, you know what I'm saying, the four angels that are standing on the four corners of the earth, they're actually holding back destruction, man. You see? And so the service are sealed, having, saying, hurt not the earth, it's a deadly serious this message this message is deadly serious man hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our power in their forehead is it so I was linking up now so I was linking up now so let's go back to um the 14th chapter, just to just lay it down, Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on, on the Mount Zion, and with him in 140 and 4,000, we've been reading about that, right? Having his father's name written in the forehead and the multitude of believers, which consists of men, women, and children, right? So, so there you go right there. Look, look, part of that mark. Part of that thawar is the proper name in the Hebrew tongue of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. No name, no salvation. So let's go right back. Let's go right back to Ezekiel. A whole lot of Israelites are going to perish, man. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. Let's read 4 again. And the Lord Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus, Said it to him, said it to the angel with the writer's ink on, right? That we just read about, right? They told the other angels, hold on, don't just don't destroy no saying Babylon yet. You see? Don't send the missiles yet. You see? The, the angels, the Lord got the angels in control of everything. Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. A people before some place and set a mark. Ain't we been reading about that? The wall, right? And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry. For all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, what's an abomination? A wicked, filthy act. We 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 we're, we're fed up. We we we're, we're angry. We're pissed. You see, and and, and the Lord knows it, right? So set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, right? And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. And to the deaf angels, you see those spirits created for vengeance. Go through wherever Jerusalem met, because remember, so people before some place and smite, meaning delete. We're living in a time of a whole lot of deletion. We're living in the time, you know, we're living in a time where there's going to be a whole lot of Israelites being deleted. Family members included, man. Look, look, in the most horrible way, man. And smite, smite means delete, to delete. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Those spirits that are created for vengeance, they're not going to have pity. They're not going to say no, you no know saying he's been playing basketball and no, he plays football and no, she's an Instagram model or no, she looks good. You no know saying she got, she got some nice bun and all. They don't, uh, her face is pretty. They don't care nothing about that, man. They see what that spirit been doing. They see what that spirit been doing, right? It says smite and smite Israel. Let not your eyes spare. Neither have you pity. Neither have ye pity. Because those spirits created for vengeance, once again, they're, they're trying to appease the wrath of him that made them. You see? It says, slay utterly old and young. See how deadly serious this message is? You got the fire coming. You got the angels. You know what I'm saying? The spirits created for vengeance going slaying. Slaying is like slay utterly old and young. And you, and you wonder why, you know what I'm saying? Old heads. You know what I'm saying? Old men, old women, young boys, young girls, Israelites be, being being um, being slain. As the scripts have said, right? It's, it's all being ordained and orchestrated by the Lord, man. You see? The Lord is sending out the hitmen. The Lord is sending out his hitmen. And it's a fearful thing. Slay utterly old and young, both maids. A maze is a young woman of marriageable age. This thing is serious. We all better fear. We all better be getting down with the get down. Get down with the get down, man. It's either get down or lay down. Both maids and little children. All kind of little children. The Lord been um, putting the spirit, you know what I'm saying? The spirit's created vengeance on little um 10-year-olds. The, the, the blast other little 10-year-olds. Just take them off the earth. It's gonna, look, man. 
slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children. But oh yeah, the good book though, right? And look, and women. A whole lot of you B dubs, a whole you, a whole lot of you Latins, a whole lot of you Native American Indian, so called Israelite women, are gonna get slayed out here, man. And women, all, all the rebels, you see, all the non-believers. Remember, all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, right? But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, the mark of exemption, the walk, which, which which represents the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures. And, and, and above all that, the proper name in the Hebrew tongue of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. We, re we read that in Revelation, the 14th chapter. It says, and begin in my sanctuary. Then they begin that the ancient men which were before the house, begin that the Negroes, Latins, and Native Americans, they know that they're the Hebrew Israelites. You see, this is a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living. It, it truly is a fearful thing, man. Listen, this is, I, I want to throw this in here. You wonder why Israel is being done the way that they they being done. I, I almost definitely want to get that so rock. just to tie it all in. Just like I said before, just something quick about to head out. Um, Deuteronomy thirty two, and I, I want I want to get that Psalms um sixty eight too. Deuteronomy thirty two. Let's just get this, just to tie it all in. Deuteronomy thirty two. 39 and the read, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You can't run from a spirit created for vengeance. You, you got Israelites out here bugged the hell out. Just going all, going all, wearing hats while they're teaching, breaking out the scriptures the wrong way. But the Lord said, go set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sign cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of us. Israel have no clue of what's coming down the pipeline, have no clue of what's going on. But a prudent man does. Psalm 78. Psalm, this thing is deadly serious. This, look, look you, 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 I know you heard that. I know you heard, I couldn't even finish saying I was saying before the pad, other pad went off. You see, this thing of ours, this message is deadly serious, Israel. The Lord got spirits, creative revenge, they're active, man. And they're lurking, man. They're, and they're ready, man. So they should be ready upon earth when need is. I'm, I must be allowed to get that too. Psalm chapter 78, verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. The heavenly father cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. Wrath. And indignation, meaning righteous anger, and all the works of the Lord are perfect. The Lord don't make no mistakes. You remember, just know that he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. She was at the wrong place at the wrong time. No, he and she was at the right place at the right time. Just remember that, man. All right. At the right place at the right time. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath. And indignation, meaning righteous anger, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Is, is it not linking up or what? Is it is the precepts not linking up or what, man? And then, then um, second Ezra um, eight and fifty, it tells you um a whole lot of misery is coming upon these people, man. A whole lot of misery because they walked in great pride. This is a heavy scripture right here. I thought the Lord was all lovey dovey. I thought the angels were white babies with wings. They ain't hurting nothing. You see? They're walking around with little arrows. Come, look, man, by sending evil angels among them. Spirits that are created for vengeance. I, I might as well get this too. And all the issues of death, you can read Psalms 68 and 20. All the issues of death come from the Lord, man. And it look, it's a whole lot of ways. It's infinite ways that the Lord can take you off this earth. Infinite ways. Look, look, quoting Hebrews 10 and 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Israel's going to learn, man, going to learn a valuable lesson. And let, us, let us hope for Alex out there, fear. Let us break down the scriptures the right way. No, no winging it. The scriptures tell us to take, uh, uncover our head, damn it, uncover your head. Don't say, I don't believe Paul's writings. Come on, man, that, that, that's nice. I, I want to I get something right quick. For the Israelite groups, you know what I'm saying, to say, oh, I'm the Apostle Paul, we don't, we don't know who wrote Timothy. We don't wrote, know who wrote this. We don't know who wrote that. Come on, man. Just stop it with the nonsense. What is, what is that scripture? Um, matter of fact, it's, it's a Timothy, ain't it? 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
like the Lord had somebody, you know what I'm saying, put some in the in the Bible, you know what I'm saying, the Holy Bible, and you know I'm saying and didn't know it, right? Like somebody just um just um slid some some words, some books in the Bible, some letters in the Bible, and the Heavenly Father didn't know nothing about it. Come on now. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, right? Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen, all scriptures. Every Bible from Revel from um, Genesis to Revelation, all scriptures, man. All right. All scripture is given by inspiration of the heavenly father, the most high. How with through his only begotten son, you how with And it's profitable. Every scripture, man, is profitable. Every book, every scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. In righteousness, that's why the Lord said, and to the others, go ye after him and smite. Let not your eyes spare. That, that, that's why. Because they add and they take it away. When the scriptures say all, when the scriptures say all, the scriptures said this, man, all scriptures given by the inspiration of the most high. So everything that's written in the Bible was inspired through the Holy Spirit, man. Everything. It's not, it's, it ain't like it, um, somebody snuck something in the Bible and the Lord don't know about it, man. And it's profitable for doctrine, meaning you can teach it, for reproof, meaning you can correct with it, for correction, he said it again, for instruction in righteousness. You see? So let's go back. That's for all the Israelites, you know what I'm saying? All the Israelite groups are saying, you know what I'm saying? The Apostle Paul's writings, we can't believe in that. We don't, we don't know who wrote the book of Timothy. Every book in the Bible was inspired by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. I, I just read it, man. So let's go right back. I want to go right back. So rock, I want to stay on the topic, you know what I'm saying? Of the spirits created for vengeance, spirits that are actually created for vengeance, man. And look, and they're going through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. You got the writer's ink horn sealing the deal, sealing us, we're sealing us. Hopefully, let's look when we part of the elect of the nation of Israel. With their mark, with their spiritual mark, that the why, which means to be exempt from judgment. Lord, when we part of that number, the Lord is sending his wrath through, man. Nothing but judgment is going forth, man. And the Lord ain't even turned up yet. And, and Lord willing, um, 3,024, you say 2,024, I say 3,024, this could be the whole for year of Jacob's trouble. That's what it's deemed. And you got Israelites playing around, so Rock chapter 39, Israelites are playing around, man. All hell break loose, and Israelites still playing around with the words of the Lord, but you're really playing around with yourself. So Rock chapter 39, verse 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance. Which in their fury lay on sore strokes, and in the time of destruction, in the time of destruction, they part their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. You see, and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance, teeth of wild beasts. Remember, go through the midst of the city and and, and slay utterly old and young. Remember, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, servants and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction, man. They shall rejoice at his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. They're just waiting on the green light. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. Didn't we just read that earlier? Spare not, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Many are created, but few Shall be saved, Israel, and the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Look, look, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Let us all fear. Shalom.